All right, welcome guests, students, parents, teachers, and administrators to our ninth annual orchestra assembly at DKJA. My name is Mr. Correa, and I am the director of the DKJA orchestra program. I'm very happy that you're all here. Let's begin by learning about something called concert etiquette. The word etiquette means to have good manners, like being on time. Concert etiquette means having good manners at an orchestra concert. I like to call concert etiquette CE. C for concert and E for etiquette. Good manners at a concert are easy. All you have to do is remember two things. When to applaud and when to be silent. When to be silent is easy. You're to be silent while the orchestra plays or while you hear me speak. The conductor will wait until it is quiet before showing the orchestra when to begin a piece of music. Adults, if you have a cell phone, always set it to silent mode when you are at a concert. When to applaud is even easier. You applaud at the end of a piece of music. If you're not sure that it's the end, just watch the conductor when he puts his arms down by his side. The piece of music is finished, and you may applaud. Now allow me to tell you about today's performance. First, you will learn about the different instruments that you can choose to play when you join the DKJA Orchestra. Then we will move on to today's performance, which is called What is Classical Music? More about that later. Also today, you will actually experience being part of the DKJA Orchestra because later in the show, I will ask your help in performing one of our pieces. Let's begin with a demonstration of the instruments you can choose to play when you join the DKJA Orchestra. One instrument you may choose is the violin. It usually plays the highest notes and sounds like this. Ready? One, two, three, four. The viola is a bit bigger. It can make lower sounds. It sounds like this. The cello is even bigger. You play it sitting down. It sounds a little lower, like this. Once you get to the fourth grade, you may choose to play the bass. The bass is the biggest of all, and so it plays the lowest notes. It is so large, you have to stand to play it. It sounds like this. Our quartet for this demonstration includes Blake Schwartz violin, Sawyer Feller viola, Olivia Ball cello, and Corey Baker playing the bass. Listen carefully to this spectacular combination of string instruments. Ready, guys? Ready? One, two. Excellent. You stand <laughs> I hope this demonstration helped you decide what instrument you would like to play next school year. And now on to our show. What is classical music? To answer this question, we're going to time travel to the different periods of music. I will tell you a little about each time period and my favorite part, the DKJA Orchestra will play music from each period. Let's time travel back to a period of music called the Renaissance. The Renaissance period of music lasts about 150 years from 1450 to 1600. This is the time of Christopher Columbus coming to America, William Shakespeare writing Romeo and Juliet, and Leonardo da Vinci painting the Mona Lisa. In this Renaissance period, the melody to Hatigva first appears in a collection of Italian madrigals. Madrigals were popular songs of the Renaissance period. About 300 years later, in 1897, this melody was combined with the poem by Naftali Hertz Imber into what we know today as Hatigva. Hatigva was proclaimed as the national anthem in 1948 and became the official national anthem of Israel in 2004. Fascinating. We would like to dedicate this beautiful song of hope to our head of school, Ms. Levine, and all our principals. Hatikva includes all members of the DKJA Orchestra. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. 
playing position? Mm -hmm. One. Another piece of music composed in the Renaissance period is Green Sleeves. Listen carefully and notice the interesting notes that are used in this ancient music. We call this combination of notes a mode, M-O-D-E. When we perform a piece of music, it is important to play it in the style of the period that it was written. The modes used in Green Sleeves contribute to that Renaissance style. Since the word Renaissance refers to the rebirth of the arts, we would like to dedicate this next piece to our anonymous parent benefactor, who was instrumental in the birth of our orchestra program nine years ago. This piece includes members of the orchestra in grades four through seven, and is an example of the kind of song you will learn to play your third or fourth year in the orchestra. Okay, green, please, people. That was lovely, green sleeves players, those with the green sleeves. Uh, okay, that was the Renaissance period, 1450 to 1600. From 1600 to 1750 is the next period of music called the Baroque period. The Baroque period is the time when the pilgrims first came to America and the first Thanksgiving was celebrated. One of the great painters of this time is Rembrandt. This is his self-portrait here on the right. 
Uh, the Baroque period is also the time of Galileo, sometimes referred to as the father of modern science. Our Baroque music is composed by Jean-Joseph Mouret. It's called Fanfare. You may recognize this music from the PBS series Masterpiece Theater. This piece includes all members of the orchestra and is an example of music you would play your first year in the orchestra. We dedicate this fanfare by Mouret to the Zinman Hall staff. Thank you for all your help in the success of this performance. All right, Thank you, thank you very much. By the way, uh, Mr. Mouret had great hair. <laughs> uh, so we have the Renaissance until 1600 and the Baroque until 1750. This next period is actually called the classical period of music. And it lasts only 50 years from 1750 until about 1800. During the classical period, we have the Declaration of Independence and 13 years later, George Washington becomes the first president of the United States of America. In the classical period, there were many rules to follow when you wrote music. Mozart, Mozart was able to follow all these rules and still compose music that will live forever. The Mozart melody you're about to hear is from one of his most famous violin pieces. Notice the very short notes that the orchestra plays. These short notes are important in playing the classical style. We would like to dedicate this classic Mozart melody to the DKJA office, library, and business office staff. Thank you for all that you do. This piece includes all members of the DKJA orchestra.
Uh, now we're up to the year 1800, which is when the Romantic period begins. The Romantic period lasts 100 years, up to 1900. This century begins with Abraham Lincoln and ends with Alexander Graham Bell inventing the telephone and Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb. In the Romantic period, everything gets bigger. The orchestra itself gets bigger. The emotion in the music is more intense and there is more freedom of expression. You will notice that the notes will now be spaced uh, closer together, they'll be much longer and much more connected than in the Mozart. These long notes are representative of the Romantic style. At this point in the performance, I would like to mention that Brahms is one of my favorite composers. Uh, by the way, his birthday was yesterday. Johannes Brahms wrote his first symphony during the Romantic period of music. Brahms declared that it took him 21 years to complete this masterpiece. We would like to dedicate this piece to our orchestra parents that, like Brahms, will take about 21 years to build the masterpieces that are your children. The melody in this piece is the kind of music you will play your fourth year of orchestra. What a great melody. Uh, another piece of music from the Romantic period is Finlandia. Finlandia is written by Jan Sibelius, a composer, you guessed it, from Finland. <laughs> Sibelius composed this piece of music to express pride in his country. Finland is so proud of Sibelius that they put his picture on their money. That'll cost you three Sibeliuses. <laughs> this quiet and peaceful song is performed by members of the DKJA Orchestra in third grade and up and is dedicated to a group of people that really appreciate peace and quiet, our classroom and private lesson teachers.
people, sorry, would you stand, please? Let's see Bailey's people. <laughs> Thank you. My mistake. <laughs> Thank you. They know the show better than I do. All right, we are now up to the 1900s and quickly approaching the present. We don't have a specific name for this period of music, so it is usually referred to as the modern period of music. In the 1900s, change occurs at an ever-quickening pace, from civil rights to landing on the moon to the beginning of the internet. The picture on the right is a visual representation of the internet. Uh, music of the modern period can have wonderful rhythms and interesting notes. There are no rules, like in the classical period. I've chosen the composer Bela Bartok to represent this period. Uh, ba Bartok was born in Hungary and is one of the most important composers of the modern period. On the right is Bartok's high school graduation picture. Also great hair. <laughs> Today we're going to play Indian Dance by Bela Bartok. And during this piece, you will have the opportunity to be a member of the DKJA Orchestra. Uh, in order to be in the orchestra, you need to know what a cue is. C-U-E, a cue. A cue looks like this, a cue from the conductor. That's a cue. That means you're supposed to, you know, do something. Uh, you're going to have two quick cues. The first cue, you're going to say the word Indian. So it's like this, you know, Indian. Okay, so watch. Ready? Indian. Oh, that's pretty good. Do it again. Louder, please. Indian. That's better. Now, if the conductor gives you a small, tiny cue like this, you do it softly. How about this? Indian. There you go. Welcome to the orchestra. The second cue is, you guessed it, dance. <laughs> okay? So it's going to look like this, Indian dance. Okay, try it. Ready? Indian dance. Okay, good. Now the dance needs to be shorter. Indian dance, because they're playing a lot of fast notes, and we don't want you in their way. Ready? Go. Indian dance. Yes. Oh, wow. You guys are great. That was our rehearsal. And uh, where are, I'm lost in the script completely now. Give me a moment. <laughs> there we go. Indian dance is dedicated to you, our honorary orchestra members. You have been an excellent audience throughout this entire concert. Thank you. Okay, here we go, Indian dance. Oh, by the way, uh, sometimes this style of music is called a barbaric style. So we all get to be, you know, barbarians. It's a lot of fun to be a barbarian. Okay, all right, here we go. Ready, barbarians? Put rest position. Tutti. Nice job, everybody. <laughs> You're now honorary barbarians. <laughs> All right. For our final piece, we will play music composed only three years ago. We call our current period of music, beginning in, in the year 2000, the contemporary period. But before we play our final piece of music, let's learn about the two special words you use at a concert. The first word is the word bravo. Bravo is an Italian word that means good job. Watch me, I'll give you a cue and you can say bravo. Ready? Bravo! Oh yes, oh yes. You follow the conductor really well. The second word you can use at a concert is the word encore. Ready? Encore! You're there. When you say encore, you're telling an orchestra that you like them so much that you want them to play more music. Hint, hint. Watch me, I'll give you a cue and you can say encore one more time. Ready? Encore! I like that. 
I like that. You may use those well. You know what I'm saying. This final piece of music is called Gypsy Moon. And as I mentioned, it was written only three years ago by an American composer named Frank Halferty. Since music of the contemporary period is changing every day, I will let you decide what describes this kind of music and this style. Uh, you'll notice it has many elements. This has a little bit of gypsy sliding around. It has some, uh, I guess, like Irish fiddle music. It has a little bit of everything. Uh, we would like to dedicate Gypsy Moon to our pianist for this performance, Mrs. Mart. Thank you, Mrs. Mart! What playing position? some encores out there. <laughs> uh, for our encore, we will play a pop song called Lean On Me by Bill Withers. We would like to dedicate this encore to our parent volunteers. Thank you for all your help and for always allowing us someone to lean on. Here's Lean On Me.
Thank you. Would you like to? You guys are all getting an encore request from your audience. That was absolutely amazing. Wow. Parents, friends, peers, teachers, that was truly, truly remarkable. Mr. Correa, thank you for your incredible effort and passion that you put into our, our orchestra each and every day. You could see today just from uh, not just our performance, but the passion and the love that each and every one of you put into your instruments. I personally am a true lover of the arts and my mother was actually a concert pianist so I was very blessed that since I was born I listened to music and orchestras and I would go to concerts and to listen to each and every one of you loving what you're doing each and every day. Your parents have really given you a gift so please today thank your parents for allowing you to do this. Mr. Correa, thank you so so much. Parents, friends, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Wishing all of you a Shabbat Shalom. All the mothers in the audience wishing you a happy, happy Mother's Day, and I hope you'll have a wonderful weekend. Great. Thank you very much. If you like today's performance, there are DVDs available. Uh, just call Miss Steele. <laughs> thank you. This concludes the program. Have a wonderful day. Students, follow your CE concert etiquette and exit quietly and listen to your teachers. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right.